I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Till next week's Monday Night Raw. Let's review this show. Because it was very transitional. If you guys don't know that, I was trying to be cult of personality. What's up, guys? Chase Oliver 68 here, bringing you another WWE Raw review for July 1st. Happy Canada Day to all you people in Canadian world. Yeah, it's Canada Day, so hopefully you guys have been enjoying it. So anyways, just wanted to talk about Raw. Review this shit. Let's get started. Opening segment had a bunch of the Raw Money in the Bank. So they're calling it the All-Star Money in the Bank. And I, like, I would understand if this was like, Near the NBA All Star Weekend, if this was on the same weekend, perhaps like if this was on NBA All Star Weekend, I believe the MLB All Star Weekend is coming up soon. I, I'm, I'm not sure because I'm not a huge baseball fan. I'm still trying to get into it, but it's like called the All Star Money in the Bank, and that's what Sheamus was calling it. Orton called it it uh, once, and I think Kane commented on it. Uh, overall, the opening segment, Daniel Bryan obviously was the star of the segment because he got most of the talking points and. He was trying to prove to himself. So if you were to go based off this opening segment, who you think is the favorite heading into the Money in the Bank ladder match, it's definitely Daniel Bryan. I felt like Christian, he kind of was going through the motions in his promo. Uh, same with Randy Orton a little bit. I felt like he was going through the motions. Uh, Punk is just a natural on the mic. But even then, you could tell that, you know, besides the RVD part where he was just, he just like told RVD, wherever the hell you're watching this, I'm going to kick your ass. Like besides that, Part. I just felt, you know, sometimes Punk may have been walking through the motions of the opening segment. But the opening segment, I felt, was way too long, very lame. The ending was lame when Randy Orton and RKO came. This led to a match where Daniel Bryan was special guest referee uh, for Kane versus Orton. And if you've seen one Kane versus Orton match, you've seen them all. They're the same fucking match every time. I, hell, I can put in, uh, what was it? What was the pay-per-view that they feuded at? Vengeance 05, was it? No, no um... After Vengeance 05, they had a, like a one-on-one -on -one match for whatever reason on Monday Night Raw. Even since like 2005 or 2004, whenever you, whenever that match took place. Ever since then, they've always had the same match. They've never had different matches. They're always the same. They work the same every single time. They may change one or two things up. But other than that, it's the same match all the damn time. And so pretty much what happens at the end is that... Randy Orton's about to coil up to do his RKL. You know me. I was getting all psyched up. I put on my baby oil. I was just like fucking like, fuck yeah, man. Randy Orton better RKO this son of a bitch. But then Daniel Bryan got in his fucking way. He got into his fucking way. And Randy Or Orton lost by a big boot. What? Like a big boot. Granted, Daniel Bryan screwed him. But I'm trying to think about it. Didn't Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan's feud kind of like end like a week ago? I'm just saying, I mean, do we need to really see these guys, like, go at it again? I mean, if they want to add storylines heading into the Money in the Bank ladder match, cool, fine by me. But even then, it's just like, it wasn't something that was just like, oh my god, this is great shit. It was just kind of like, wait, why Why are they angry at each other? Uh, we got the Shield. They took on Christian and the Usos. This match happened on SmackDown, so go watch that one. Being that honest here, I like the SmackDown one a little bit better uh, than this Raw one. I thought the SmackDown one was a little bit more exciting, if I should say. Uh, Dolph Ziggler returned into reign, and he's now sporting a new look. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know if he showed this on SmackDown. Uh, he told AJ Lee, don't be a bitch to Caitlyn or something. Uh, you can tell now he's a baby face. But, like, the beard and the hair, I, I kind of like Dolph Ziggler's new look. He won his match against Jinder Mahal, and then he evaded three-man band. I don't know why they were trying to go after him, but he did it. Fondango took on Sheamus, and Fondango is in the heel Money in the Bank ladder match, because that's what I'm going to call it, the heel Money in the Bank ladder match, because it's all fucking heels. There's not one baby face in that match. I can just imagine, well, they're going to be in Philadelphia. If they were anywhere else, the crowd would suck. Uh, no, no disrespectful to any other crowds, but if they weren't in a wrestling city, uh, none of these people would get reactions. Like If they, if they were, uh, say, for example, in a Los Angeles, I'll, I'll diss my own hometown. If they were in a Los Angeles, California, and they were having this heel money in the bank ladder match, seriously, Swagger's music hits, no fans would cheer. Cesaro, no fans would cheer. Sandell, no fans would cheer. Cody Rhodes, no fans would cheer. Ambrose, and eh, maybe a couple fans would probably cheer. Because Los Angeles does have some smarky ass fans, but no fans would cheer. And I, Fandango, definitely no fucking fans would cheer. Like, in all honesty, this heel money in the bank ladder match, I get it. It's, oh, and the Miz. I, I guess, the, isn't the Miz in the match? Isn't he like one of the baby? No, he's facing off against Curtis Axel. What am I thinking about? Yeah, there's no faces in this match, so I don't know what the fuck they're booking there. But it's okay, because Fandango is a true heel because he gets counted out every match, so 
Yeah. That's what's up. Oh, God. For anyone who has been subscribed to me, who anyone who has ever been subscribed to me, you guys know I was on that Ryback train. I was on the Ryback roller coaster, and I was like, feed me more. I loved Ryback. I still do. I still do. I'm still a fan. I ain't a fair weather fan. I'm not like most wrestling fans that jump back and forth. If I like someone, I fucking like them. And I can critique them in my reviews. I will critique about their characters in my reviews. There's no denying it. Fan of CM Punk, I'll critique him. Fan of Daniel Bryan, I'll critique him. I'm not like most wrestling fans that are just so biased towards that one wrestler. And I'm a huge Ryback fan. I love me some Ryback. Okay? But what the fuck are they doing with him? I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Fucking shit. On SmackDown, they made him look like a little fucking bitch. And on Raw, they make him look like a bitch by doing this, especially with all the fucks in the world, The Miz? Okay, I would understand maybe this was Big Show, and they wanted to bring back Big Show really, really big and strong. But no! This is the fucking Miz taking out Ryback's knee, and Ryback saying he can't wrestle? Oh my fucking goodness! I paid back this motherfucker was getting hit by a fucking ambulance parts, getting put through a goddamn table! And you're telling me now, all of a sudden, he's a bitch? How are you supposed to fucking take this guy seriously? Fuck this shit, man. I'm sick and tired. I'm still, I love me some Ryback. This is why I'm pissed off about it. I'll be pissed off that they did this, even though I wasn't a fan of Ryback. But this is fucking stupid. Fucking stupid. You don't make someone that looks like a fucking badass into a pussy bitch and then fuck Fucking Chris Jericho, Cold Breaker is him. I love Chris Jericho. Don't get me wrong, one of my favorites of all time, if not my favorite of all time. But this is not how you book Ryback. This is not what you, how you do. It's stupid. You make him look like a pussy ass bitch. It's ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. <sighs> CM Punk and Curtis Axel took on Darren Young and Tyus O'Neill. Yeah, Curtis Axel stole the win from CM Punk. Oh, no. What, what are we going to do here? Oh, this is such dramatic feuds. Um, in all honesty, I thought the match was okay. Uh, I really did like how Axel was trying to prove himself to Punk because Punk was not really interested in tag teaming with him. So I, I did um, I did really did enjoy what they did here. So um, that's all I really got to say about that segment. Kaylin versus Alicia Fox and then... Don't care, and AJ comes out and shows a fat picture. Don't care, and Cody Rhodes versus Antonio Cesaro. Hey, look, Zack Swagger's back. We the fucking people. Yay, whoop the fucking do. Uh, good mat, good little short match, and Antonio Cesaro won. All right, we move on forward. Oh, okay, so backstage segments that we got. Uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan were arguing. Okay, next. Vicky Guerrero was making fun of Triple H and Vince, and then Stephanie was like, oh, I'm pissed off about that, so you're going to have a job evaluation, like, next week, and I'm like, what? What's the point of this? Like, th this is probably, like, one of the most dumbest things I've ever heard. Um, shout out to my boy, Levy McIntyre. He's calling me on Skype right now, but I'll answer this, I'll answer his call probably after the review's finished. <laughs> I, I've, his channel's Thrash Maniac, go check it out, and he's also doing a gaming channel with, uh, frick, he, he always asks questions in my q and I forgot his name. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I, da I know his name's David Rivera, but I don't know his YouTube channel off the top of my head. Sorry if I'm rambling here. But we move on forward to, you know, pretty much Mark Henry comes out. He says he's going to win the WWE Championship, and that's pretty much all he really said. He's just going to win it. And they also had a sick um, promo of his. Like, this was, like, a really well-done promo where they showed him coming to the WWE. They showed him how dominant he is, what destruction he can cause. It was a really good promo segment, uh, video package. I really did like it. So, you know, pretty much the whole night we were getting, we're showing, we're showing video. Okay. We're showing fucking video of great WWE champions and great world heavyweight champions. And they did a fantastic job with these videos. I'm not going to lie. I, I found this to be the bright spot to Monday Night Raw. I said, if anything's really great about this episode, it's this right here. Because it's educating you fans on who are some of the great champions. And, you know, Vicky Guerrero announced early on in Raw that, oh, we're going to have a Champions versus Champions match. And, you know, I would be excited for a Champions versus Champions match normally. Normally I would be, 
But the thing is, we've seen them so many times. Like last year with CM Punk and Brian. I think we got a couple with uh, Punk and someone else as World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, with Sheamus, I believe, a couple times. You know, we, we've got them so many times that it's not really exciting. And I really did like how they were trying to hype it up. But I'm sorry. Okay, you can make this argument for Cena that maybe, hey, he's up there with some of the, the greats of the WWE Championship, maybe on the Triple H level when, you, when you're comparing WWE Champions. But when you look at the World Heavyweight Championship side, and then you see our World Heavyweight Champion as Alberto Del Rio, really? You're trying to, like, make this, like, a big deal, like, these super, like, putting these video packages with these superstars is a bad fucking idea, especially for Alberto Del Rio. Like, like I said, Cena, you can make the argument. Maybe he's on the same level of Triple H when it comes to being a WWE Champion. He's nowhere near an Austin level. He's nowhere near a Hulk Hogan level, Bob Backlund, and, or, or Bruno San Martino level. But he's definitely, like, at least near Triple H's level of being a WWE Champion. A Del Rio, he does not even compare to Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, Steen, even Booker T, in my opinion, I don't even compare Del Rio to Booker T's damn level. Uh, I forgot. Harley Race. He doesn't even compare it to Harley Race to me. So it's like, to me, it hurts the champions a little bit more showing these historic wrestlers. And you're trying to make it seem like, you know, these because they're our champions. You're trying to make it seem like these guys are our biggest things in WWE. I mean, if this was Cena versus Batista in a champions versus champions match, I'm just saying if it, if it was. Because they, they were the faces of the new generation. If this was Cena versus Batista, or let's say another Cena versus Punk match, this would actually make sense because I would argue Batista is on the level of a Booker T when it becomes being a World Heavyweight Champion. And I would argue that Punk, as a WWE Champion, is on the level of a Triple H. So, you know, it would make sense. But for the World title and the WWE title, it, just, it was just clusterfuck, especially on Del Rio's part, uh, if you get what I'm saying. Uh... Del Rio versus Cena, it was a really good match. I enjoyed it. Uh, Ziggler comes out for the distraction, and this leads to Del Rio losing the match. But once again, very good match. Good sequences from like the... I like the ending where, Ar where Cena goes for the AA, and then uh, Del Rio goes for the arm bar, and Cena reverses to the SCF. I thought that was very well done. But we move on forward from that, pretty much. Cena gets the win. Oh, yeah, he won another match. It's John fucking Cena. You know, it's, he's Superman. He does whatever he fucking wants. And... Pretty much, Mark Henry comes, and he just throws the title down, and we get a promo that Bray Wyatt's debuting next week. Yay! Uh, overall, thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Like I said in the beginning, this was a very transitional episode. I thought that they were just trying to give us an episode for this week, because they know they have to, because it's a weekly fucking show, and they pretty much just said, hey, you know, <laughs> let's just do this shit, <coughs> let's just do this shit, and we know that next week's <coughs> Raw will probably be a better episode, because we're going to have a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I thought it was going to be, I thought it was an okay episode. It wasn't like anything as good as the past two weeks, but for what it was, match quality wise, and, you know, the video packages showing past champions, it's just that, in all honesty, it's just, it was just an okay episode. I just felt they were trying to get through for the week. Uh, we got Vicky's uh, job evaluation next week, Wyatt Family debuting, more Cena Henry stuff, more Money in the Bank stuff next week. So I'm more excited for next week's Raw than you know, watching this current week's Raw. It was not a Raw where you could sit down and be entertained from three hours of it. But anyways, guys, what do you guys think of this week's Monday Night Raw? You can comment comment down below your thoughts or, I don't know, talk to me on Skype at ChaseLobber68 about it if you want to talk to me on there about it. Um, dog, shut up outside. No, don't bark at me. Anyways, Tyus O'Neal is barking outside. I don't know why. He's upset. Tyus O'Neal, I know you're upset, but you need to be quiet. He's still upset. He's still upset. He's still upset. But anyways, remember you can send questions in for the Q&A. <laughs> this is hilarious. Titus O'Neil and Derek Young are upset outside. Shit. But you can send in questions for the Q&A by inboxing me here on YouTube. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up for Tyus O'Neil barking and Darren Young barking outside. I don't know why they're barking outside. They can't come to my place. As well, subscribe if you like me by clicking the little icon or down below. I'm out of here. Talk to you later. Peace!